My name is Carrie Boyce and I am an outreach executive at the Royal Society of Chemistry. The Royal Society of Chemistry is a not-for-profit organisation. Uh, they're the UK's uh, professional body for chemical scientists, uh, leading the way in chemical sciences and building the world's chemistry community. As an outreach executive, uh, my role predominantly involves project management. Uh, I manage a lot of uh, projects involved uh, with working with schools and with public engagement as well. That includes things like public lectures in our London offices. Later on this evening, I'll be managing an event that's taking place in our library here at our offices in Burlington House. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Carrie Boyce, and on behalf of the Royal Society of Chemistry, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's talk. I suffer from a rare autoimmune condition called dermatomyositis, which set in probably towards the end of 2009. I started to feel really lethargic and, and worn out. Uh, and then I started to get this burn in my muscles. Uh, so any sort of movement, just getting out of bed, getting out of a chair, making a cup of tea, it started to feel like my muscles were exercising at 100%. It was absolutely agonizing, to be honest with you. The movement was agony before, but that, that progressed to just not being able to physically move. And ultimately, I lost the ability to speak and to swallow, and things weren't getting better. My doctors had the difficult decision to run with uh, quite aggressive chemotherapy. I was able to turn around and, and was on the mend a lot quicker. At the minute I'm asymptomatic, so I don't have any visible symptoms. Uh, but day to day, week on week, I might feel a little bit more tired or sluggish. And on days when I'm not feeling particularly great, the journey to work in itself can be quite challenging. My workplace is only about five miles from where I live, uh, so I'll just hop on a bus to get in, but there are times when even that journey is a bit much. And to be fair to my employers, they, they have worked around that and given me the option to work from home on days when I'm perhaps not feeling 100%. I also find I have to go for a lot of regular blood tests and hospital checkups. Uh, and they've been pretty great at letting me take time off to, to go for those. Quite often I'll work from home on those days. One of the hardest things I found when I was applying for full-time jobs again was knowing how to present my condition. I'd been out of work for a little over a year and I didn't know how to mention that to my employers, how to put that on my CV. How do you get into this idea that I've been in hospital for a chunk of the past year and I've been really sick and now I'm fine but do you believe me that I'm fine? Will you give me this job if you know that I've been sick and I have all this, this history and these complications attached to me that I'm not just a straightforward candidate? Uh, so I didn't mention it. It did come up in the interview uh, but actually I think it stood in my credit to, to some extent because my interviewers were able to see everything that I'd been through, everything that I'd overcome and how determined I was to, to keep going and keep on track with my recovery, as well as contributing to, to employment. Having a job means the world to me. Uh, I know there's, like everyone else, I wake up some days and I really don't want to go to work. But, but having that independence, having that place to go, people to talk to every day, feeling like I'm contributing to something more. So one of the things that have, has come out of my, my job at the minute and people that I work with and the various activities that I do is that I've been able to take back my identity, take back what was stolen from me by this rare condition.